I Testify is about testifying of what Jesus Christ has done and can do in each of our lives. Through testimony of people just like you and through study of His Word, our prayer is to encourage each follower of Christ to be a light in this world. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5.16はい Glad that you're able to join us for this episode of I Testify. Today we have our good friend Mike Long, who's joining us from uh, Souls West. He's currently the industry and assistant director of Souls West. Mm -hmm. So before you dive into your testimony, you have an awesome story to share. Can you kind of briefly explain what Souls West is? Well, yeah, um, Souls West is a, uh, a two-year Bible college and it's uh, souls is actually an acronym for seven day adventist uh, leadership outreach school and um, it would be I always say it's comparable to a trade school you know if you go to itt tech or something like that and mm -hmm. you learn about um, computers and, mm -hmm. and things um, you come out you know or you go to a culinary school you become mm -hmm. a chef mm -hmm. uh, at souls west what ends up happening is after those two years um, the students they end up um, when they leave, they end up by default being, uh, becoming a leader in our church. So uh, we have, uh, we teach, you know, the, the 28 fundamentals of, of our church and we also do uh, teach them how to be Bible, Bible workers. And one of the, one of our biggest focuses um, at Souls West is um, cold portering, which, uh, which the students go door to door, which is part of the work study program, which helps them pay their tuition while going through school at the same time. Awesome, fantastic, thank you for sharing. So just tell us a little bit how you met the Lord and how the Lord brought you to Souls West. Uh, well, it's really, a, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, uh, for the most part, most part of my life, I, I actually uh, grew up here and down here in Southern California and in, uh, in Los Angeles, really in the heart of Los Angeles. And um, I grew up uh, really in, I grew up in an area that was, that was pretty rough. So I spent a lot of time in the streets and I had, um, my mom, who was at the time a single parent and uh, two younger siblings, and I uh, had a lot of responsibility with them. And uh, we, because of that, there was, there was really no, God wasn't in, a factor um, in, our, in our lives or anything like that. And, um, and my mom, um, unfortunately at that time, because of you know, just all the stress and things in, in life, was, uh, had a really bad you know, drug abuse problem. So she, she, uh, she, was, she did drugs for a while. And, and because of that, it, I had to grow up a lot faster. And I, and I had to you know, spend a lot of time um, uh, taking care of, of the siblings uh, and things like that. But yeah, that was, that, uh, you know, outside of that, it was, I grew up playing uh, uh, basketball a lot. Like I was a, I loved basketball. It was um, maybe 12 or 14 hours a day that I'd play basketball. I'd wake up wow. in the morning before school and play. And uh, when I was younger, all my friends used to always say, you know, when you make it to the NBA, don't, you know, don't, don't forget about us. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, that was, that was really a big part of my life because um, if you guys, if, if you know, in, um, in, in, in my culture or our culture, uh, um, when you're growing up in, um, I guess what I would call the ghetto. Mm -hmm. um, the only way out is usually to become a professional athlete or to become a like you know rapper or mm -hmm. some kind mm -hmm. of star, you know, on that on that level. And that was kind of my dream. I'm going to be a professional athlete, and then I'll take care of my family and things like that. Um, so that that was kind of the, the childhood life. I know you're asking me how did I meet the Lord and come to Souls West. Um, it. Uh, didn't happen until I was about 34 years old, and um, through a series of events, I worked at a place called In-N-Out Burger that some of you might be familiar with. Um, I worked there for 10 years. I was a manager, and I had a um, a brother and a sister that worked for me there, and at the time, they weren't Adventists, and there was a guy who worked there, and he was at Venice and started giving the sister Bible studies. So uh, one night, we were flipping burgers, and uh, in flipping burgers, by God's grace, she said, hey, the, you know, God came up somehow, and she said, hey, you want to go to church? She invited me to church. And, um, and then we went to church on a Saturday. I thought it was pretty interesting because I only knew people to go to church on Sundays. 
So, uh, mm. you know. Have you been to church before That's that? That's what I was saying. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to church before that? Had you any experience with going to church? or? Like? Uh, I think maybe once or twice I can remember uh, going to church with my grandma, I oh, think. Okay. My grandma was the one in, in our lives that was, that was very, uh, she was the one that was spiritual, like my grandma, mm. growing up, so. So you didn't have any bias or anything towards, like, church people or, or going to church? Okay, so you're just curious. Yeah, I kind of, okay. you know, I, I, growing up, I actually, it's like I believed in God, but I didn't know who God, who God was, you know. Mm. People just believe in God, okay, yeah. I, I, you know, you say you pray or something like that. So it was, mm. it was kind of that's kind of how it how it was when I was younger. It, it wasn't really um, like a um, common thing in your life or a habit or anything like that to pray oh. or to even have a relationship with God or talk with God. It was just kind of something that was there in the background. Yeah, it was. It was kind of like you know, if something b good happens, you're like, oh. Thank God, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of just a saying or, yeah. or, you know, if, if something bad was going on is, you know, it's, you should pray to God, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like, you know, I went to church all the time or mm -hmm. I, you know, had a relationship with God. It was, it was just more kind of, I guess, superficial or mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't even know what word you would use, use for that. So mm -hmm. take us from you're working, you're managing at in and out You, uh, you have this, this guy who works for you, right? Ends up. Um, leading you to come to church at least that one time. What happened from there? Did you return back right away? or? Well, no. What ended up happening was the, it, the girl who worked for me, she invited me. She was getting Bible studies, her and her brother. And, um, and I went to church with her, I think, twice. But then it, it was really interesting because, I, you, know, uh, you know, there is an enemy out there and that, you know, that, that, that we uh, have to face every day. Um, but I got moved uh, out of where I was living. I was living at the time in Fresno, uh, California, and I got moved because I was a manager at In-N-Out. They move you. You could be moved around and work mm -hmm. at any In-N-Out. That's the way. That's kind of the way it goes. You know, you, once, once you're trained there, it's uh, the system's the same everywhere. So they moved me, and I was I moved away from those those uh, from my friends. I actually lost contact with them uh, for about four years um, wow. before before I was able to make contact with them again. So, so yeah, it was in Clovis, California. I went to the Clovis Seventh-day Adventist Church with her twice. Okay, all right. So then during those four years, what were your thoughts about God or hmm. church? Or Well, you know, it, it was uh, like, it was kind of just a foregone kind of conclusion. I just went to church with them. And once I went back to uh, to to a different place, I was just back in my regular rut of life, working, uh, partying, hanging out with friends, you know, um, the, and, and I actually really never even thought about it. it, it I never even thought about it again. And um, within that time, um, it was, it was through a, it was really through a series of events, uh, that happened that I really believe, you know, God allowed to happen that, that I can't, that I ended up coming back to the church. Um, I was, Oh, before go before ahead. you go ahead, yeah. um, at this point, did you have aspirations still of being a professional athlete? I'm curious about that too. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I, I kind of I skipped the whole lot, but I actually <laughs> when I was I, I went, um, you know, when I came, when I moved out of, out of LA, I moved to Central California, and I was in Visalia going to the College of Sequoias. I played uh, college basketball there, and um, and then and then I ended up. Uh, I ended up, I, I have a daughter. My daughter just turned 17 actually a couple days ago. And, um, and when I had my daughter, um, it changed like just the course of my life. So, and I was gonna go, I got a full ride scholarship to Cal State Fullerton to play basketball. That was the one I accepted. But because I had my daughter, I felt, oh, I have to work now, which is how I ended up at In-N-Out Burger. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, um, and what ended up, I think, I'm trying to think exactly how it happened. I ended up playing two years of semi-professional basketball in Fresno for a team called the, the Heat Wave, um, the Fresno Heat Wave. So I did that for a couple years. And then um, it was kind of, that league isn't like the NBA, so it, the structure of pay was a little bit different. And because I have, you know, a daughter now, I'm saying, oh, I have to, I have to take care of, you know, take care of business. Mm. And I wanted to be there because growing up, I didn't have, my dad wasn't in my life you know, my whole life. So I, hmm. I, you know, I always promised myself, hey, when I have a kid, I'm going to make sure I'm there for them. 
Um, so what ended up happening was, you know, I, I just started working and, and I was, and then, you know, the basketball kind of, the basketball dream just kind of, you know, went away. Went so away you could that. say in a way is that your daughter was the one who helped to bring you to the Lord as well. Oh man, my daughter helped a ton of things. You know, when, in, 2000, in 2000, this was a big turning point in my life. I, uh, growing up, I, like I told you guys that my, my dad was an alcoholic, my mom was too, my mom had drug abuse. Well, when I got to college, I picked up drinking. Uh, uh, and what ended up happening is when I was, you know, when I was about, I think 19 or 20, maybe 21 years old, um, I went through a series of four weeks where I got four DUIs and uh, in four weeks. Wow. Ooh. And, uh, and it, was, it, was really, it was really life-changing and, and you know, I, I remember my mom telling me that's just, you know, you got lucky because God, you know, saps you on the wrist because you, you never killed anyone and you didn't hurt mm -hmm. yourself. And, and because they were so consecutive, what ended up happening was when I went to court, they said, they said well, the judge said, well, because they're, because they're consecutive and you don't have priors, I can't, you know, you can't get like recharged or anything like that. It just keep coming back. And when they're all, when we get them all in, then we'll give you the, give you, you know, your sentence. Or, so in other words, it was, were much better for you that it was kind of like one big lump charge instead of like you kept doing it and doing it and doing oh, it. Oh wow, yes. I, wow. Um, mm -hmm. So so yeah, that that um, that somehow that worked out and I, I don't even know what, what happened. I know I really believe it was God, but two of them got thrown out because I got pulled over by the same cop all four weeks. <laughs> and two of them got thrown out, and then and then after that um, <laughs> after that I, the time was was cut. A, a whole lot, and then I went to the judge and said, "Hey, I need you know four more classes to get my degree, and and I have this scholarship, and can I have this time off?" and and he allowed me to get off of you know what was house arrest at the time and go to go you know go come down to L.A. finish up my four classes, and when wow. I went back to say, "Hey, I'm coming back so I can finish the rest of my time," when I went to the court, you know, it was this is really bizarre, but they said, "Yeah, we don't have any of your records at all like, what? in the system." And I, and I actually made them put that in writing because I was afraid. I'm like, man, you know, this is going to be So, <laughs> yeah, that so is they amazing. said you're clean. You they, said, they said I was clean. The only thing that was still there was with the DMV. I had to, you know, pay all, obviously pay my fines and do the classes and things like that. But uh, other than that, they couldn't find anything in the system, in the courts or anything oh, wow. like that. Wow. So it was, so, so some pretty significant things happened, you know. And I just have to say that just reminds me so clearly of, like, you know, our, our forgiveness with, <clears throat> with God, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, that eventually he could be like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm looking here and there's nothing here. Yeah. Even though mm. yeah. Your record yeah. is clean. Sorry, I just said that. Mm. Yeah, so, Man, so, that was a, so that was, that was, pretty, that was a pretty amazing story. So my daughter, I felt like God put my daughter in my life to slow me down, mm. uh, which in return helped me out because then I started working at In-N-Out. Mm -hmm. And working at In-N-Out, if you guys have ever been there, it's kind of like sometimes people think, people at In-N-Out are brainwashed because everyone's so nice and they're smiling. And, <laughs> and, you know. So um, that, that, actually, that actually helped me. Not that I was like mean or anything like that, but it just, you know, there's like no cussing, you know, you know there's tons of things that, you know, they had values mm -hmm. and things. So that, that really helped me, like that kind of changed my like attitude. I grew up in the streets. I kind of like didn't trust people. Like I, that was just kind of how I was, you know, I always kind of watching my back mm -hmm. and things like that. So, so In-N-Out helped out a lot. I had a similar experience. I worked at Starbucks, and I know from what other people say mm -hmm. that they're very similar in how they're structured and stuff like that. And yes, they I are. had to learn how to be more outgoing and friendly to people. Yeah. <laughs> I would just never talk to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm naturally outgoing, but it was it, it was it was still a good, it was still a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So you found a community basically mm -hmm. at at In and Out where you worked. Yes. Including your first Seventh Day Adventist friends. Yes. And so take us now to when you got in touch with them again or when you started going so, back to church? Yeah, so a couple of years went by and um, then and here I was no longer hap working at In-N-Out. Like something really bizarre happened there. Uh, and it, it was, I really believe it was God because it, it had to be like with, with the situation that happened. But um, I was no longer working there and then I realized, you know, 10 years had went by and I said, man, you know, in and out consumed my life a lot, but it was a great place to work at, um, great culture. And, 
And then um, what ended up happening when I didn't work there is I got back, I started going back into the things that I did before because I had all this free time. So now I'm hanging out with friends again, I'm partying, I'm drinking a lot, I'm, you know, I'm just back almost to regular to a point where I thought about it and I realized, man, you know, I have to get out of here because if I don't, this is, you know, that, that road before was leading me to a road of destruction. And I knew, hey, I'm, I got to get out of this or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done. So, um, so I decided it was a friend, it was a friend that I knew in, in Fresno and I had kind of came up with him because my drinking addiction turned into a gambling addiction mm -hmm. because I said, oh, I don't want to drink, I don't want to get DUIs. And then I just substituted with gambling. So now I was playing poker professionally and this friend that I had, I, I said, you know, can I move with you up to Fresno um, because I just need to get out of this area because I, I know that this is going to get really bad. So I moved up there with him. I got a job at the casino, ended up losing that job because of drinking. You know, I went to a Christmas party at that job, um, trying to catch up with everyone, drank, blacked out, didn't know what even happened. The job caught me in. He did something crazy and you can no longer work here. Mm. And I was just, and here I was, and, and this was really the crossroads right here. Here I was at, I was, I think at that time I was 33 years old. I was sitting in my room and I was just going, man, I played semi-pro basketball. I worked 10 years at in and out I was a professional poker player. Like all these different things happened. And here I am with nothing to show for it anything and um, I've never been like a person that gets like really discouraged because everything was hard growing up it's always been hard mm. um, so there I was sitting there and I was like really really broken I was just like man you know what like how did I get to this point and um, and uh, and that's where you know the verse in Isaiah comes in um, Isaiah 41 10 audience you can as well turn with us on your phone or in Isaiah, in, uh, in Isaiah 41.10, the Bible reads, uh, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And interestingly enough, at that time, you know, I, obviously I didn't know Bible verses and things like that, but there was something at that time telling me, like, it's going to be okay, you know, like, you know, you, like you have to get through this because that was a time in my life that I was the most discouraged. I was just thinking, you know, that it's over. You know, I called my mom. I said, maybe I should just come move with you in Georgia. And, you know, and, you know, I was, but my daughter was the one, I don't want to leave her. So, you know, I, so I remembered, I bought a Bible when I, when that girl, you know, that young lady took me to church. So I called my mom and at this time, my mom is sober now and she's been sober for, you know, 20 years maybe or close to it. And uh, she, she says, I said, what should I read in the Bible? And she says, read the, you know, read the Gospels first. Uh, maybe you want to read Acts first and then you read the Gospels. So my mom was a, a co-pastor and had a husband that was a pastor at this time of, non, of a non-denominational wow. church, their own church. Yeah, and just yeah. have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Did she change, her life changed because she came to know God too? Or is that... Did it come after or before? No, that, that's, I think, was, was the main thing. Uh, part of it was, you know, having her having kids and feeling like she failed us and wanting to make sure she took care of my, my younger brother's a lot younger than me, so she, you know, my mom was still, you know, had kids in the house. My sister's maybe five years younger. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's what, what did it. Okay, and I was just curious, because then it seems like you're recognizing that something has changed in her life and she's completely changed, so maybe you wanted a part of that too? Is I, that what you thought? Or you know, I just thought that, you know, at this point, everything has been bad. Like, I've gone down these same streets over and over and over, and, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of really at the end of the rope. Mm. I always say that. I'm at the end of my rope right there, and I just said, you know, I, I don't know what to do here. I don't know how I got to this point. I'm discouraged, and, um, and that's when I started, you know, reading the Bible. Well, Oddly enough, where I was living at, and for, I was actually living in Clovis, um, and I was right around the corner from the church that she had took me to four years prior, and I didn't even know it. So that happened, and then maybe a week or two later, it was on a Saturday that I was sleeping, and it was like a voice that was over me audibly saying, you need to go to church, you need to go to church, you need to go to church. Mm -hmm. I woke up and, I, and everything clicked. I said, that's why this area looks so familiar. Mm -hmm. I said, I've been here, I knew I had been here before and you know, walking up and down that street all the time and, mm -hmm. and that church was right around the corner. 
I was right across the street from the Central California Conference, the Seventh Day Adventist Conference. So, <laughs> so, so I, so I get up, I go to that church. The pastor's different. Every, you know, I don't really recognize anyone. Um, I, the, he preaches a sermon. At the end, I go up to him. I say, "Hey, you know, I, I've never studied the Bible before. I want to. Is there anyone that can give me Bible studies? You know, I'm, I'm just, I need help. You know, that, that's where I'm at. So, so he says, come to Potluck and we'll, we'll figure it out. So we go to Potluck and. He's calling all these people, and um, I run into a guy that you guys, may, you may have heard this name. His name is Nelson Ernst. He's, uh, he's the guy who created Glow. Mm -hmm. So I run into him, and he says, oh, you're such and such as boss from in and out I remember you. And, he's, <laughs> and he had just got married and, and was saying, I'm not, I'm not taking any more Bible studies. I already have eight. You know, I just got married, um, this type of thing. But said, you know what, because, you know, I know you, uh, I'll give you a Bible study. And, that, and, that, and that's kind of, that was kind of the, the introduction. So, mm -hmm. so then the next week, I'm at the Central California Conference with Nelson. He's, I'm asking him all these questions about the Bible. And, and that same week, after he gave me that Bible study, he says, he texts me and he says, hey, there's an evangelistic series starting at the end of this week. Would you be interested in going to it? And I said, why not? I got nothing to lose. I'm, you know, at the end of my rope. So that was kind of what segued me into getting so, back in. So I was, I was curious, this verse that you went to, Isaiah mm -hmm. 41, 10, was that one that you came across at that time, or is that one that's meaningful to you looking back on it now? You it's, yeah, it's, it's meaningful looking back. Okay. Looking back on it now mm -hmm. because because I because you know God is, is is saying don't be afraid, and that was one time in my life, probably the first time in my life that you know if. if if you know anyone that knows me, they're like, man, Mike Long's not scared of anything, you know. Um, I grew up around gangs and shootings and seeing people killed in, right in front of my face. Like, and, 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 um, and so I was, that, at that point, I was, I was fearful. I was discouraged. I was even, I would say I would be borderline, like, just willing to, like, it's over. Like, I don't even care if I live anymore. And mm -hmm. just looking back, um, you know, God is good. He promises, you know, to... Yeah. to, to, to mm -hmm. hold us up. He tells us not to be afraid. I mean, and I was like, man, that was, you know, there was something in me saying, you know, it's, it'll, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, you know, but, you know, obviously it was probably the Holy Spirit you know, mm -hmm. speaking. And I think, so. too, it just stands out to me that at the end of that verse it says God is going to uphold us with his righteous mm -hmm. right hand. Amen. And, the, and the right hand, of course, being the hand of favor, you know, when it talks about the right yeah. hand in the Bible, it's the hand of favor. So, like, even though we have this picture and, and all of us can relate, uh, certainly that, you know, we're not worthy mm -hmm. of that, right? We've done all these things in our past, whatever our yeah. past happens to be, but, you know, here's, here's the message from the Bible that, hey, I'm going to uphold you with my right hand of favor, even though, regardless of what you've done in the, mm -hmm. in the past. In the past, yes. So, uh, so I know uh, quickly, what, is, what ends up happening is I, I go to that evangelistic series, uh, some crazy things happen in order for me to get there. Um, I hear the message first time and I'm blown away and, I, and I'm a really uh, like kind of fact-based person and kind of, you know, filling things out and I'm saying there's, there's no way that this is fake. And, um, and then I was thinking in my head, you know, I want to, at this time I made a change. I, I started doing like P90X, you know, I, I, like I was, and, and I think that's what cleared my mind for God to be able to speak to me. Hmm. I um, went through that series, it was about 15 days in a row that I went to church every day and um, and then I was, oh, man, I wonder about getting baptized. A pastor and a Bible worker shows up at my house, and I'm like, wow. And then they say, have you ever thought about getting baptized? Yeah, I'm going to get baptized. So I get baptized, and then the girl, uh, the young lady and her brother, they both, uh, they're both just happened to be on spring break because they they had gotten baptized, became Adventists, and now they go to Souls West <laughs> at the time, and they're, on, they're in their second year, just about to graduate. They're on spring break. And, and someone says, hey, I've been taking Mike Long to this evangelistic series. You guys know Mike Long, right? And they're like, what? Do we know Mike Long? We know Mike Long. You, you know, they go crazy. <laughs> they show up there. And, um, and I think, and then a month later, I get hired at the Central California Conference. I'm shipping glow to people, oh. filling orders. Mm. Uh, two months after that, I get into a, a youth rush program, which is a coal porter program for the summer, and I'm 34 years old with curfew, <laughs> uh, with all these young people <laughs> and all these leaders that are younger than me telling me what to do. But it's okay, you know. I, I mean, I, because, I, because, I, because I'm not, you know, I'm not above that. I've never been above, you know. I know what you know. I know what I signed up for. I know yeah. how to take orders. Yeah. I do that, 
and then I meet a guy named Mike Tuazon. He shows up the first day of the program before it even starts. Him and his wife Candace, and they they come in and they start and they start talking to me. And we we heard about you, all these other things, and and um and then I don't want to go to Souls West because it's a two year program and I'm older, and I'm and, but then some a series of things happens and I'm super convicted and I sign up for Souls West and I end up being the first person that was accepted to Souls West that summer, which was the summer of 2000. And 13, um, mm -hmm. in that youth rush program is where I met God. Mm -hmm. I had an experience where I met a guy at a door who I had saw at a businesses that I was at earlier that day, and we started connecting. And he looked at me and said, "Man, I know he was a street guy. I was a street guy. So I know when people are doing bad things in the street, and I know you're out here doing something good." So um, it was it was on that day that I said, mm -hmm. because of the way I met this guy and everything that happened, I was I said, God has to be real. And that's when I had that experience uh, with God. And, and that was what, you know, that was actually what prompted me to, to, to understand and have a relationship with God and understand that his call for me was in leadership my whole life. But to do, I knew that I was gonna, at that point going to be doing ministry for the rest of my life. Mm. Wow. This may be a, a more complex question. I know we only have a, a couple minutes, mm. but I... I have this, I had this impression to ask you this, why Seventh-day Adventism? Why not, I mean, your your mom is, I don't know if she's, she still is, but she's, you know, pastoring a non-denominational, why Seventh-day Adventism? You, you kind of touched on it, you said it was very fact-based, but for you to devote your whole life to something that you believe in, why? Uh, I think, man, you know, I, I can only say that it's really God, you know. Um, I really believe that God led me to the Seventh Day Adventist Church because, because he because he knew the calling on my life. He obviously knows who I am, and he knew knew probably that I would accept it, and um, he knew that I would would study it, and he knew that I would really try to figure out if it was real or fake. Yeah. And um, you know, this was this is one this the one thing that I really. Um, admire about our church is the fact that in in all the years of coming through the, the years that I've been here um, it's always been study it for yourself look at it in the Bible mm -hmm. don't always just listen to what people say and just believe off of what somebody else says so so for me what I what I've learned in being in our church is that the reason I'm in our church is because I study the things that we believe and I believe them for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't believe them just because someone told me this is what it is, even though that could be right. I believe it for myself. And I know that I believe this because the things that God has done, the testimony that I have, I mean, there's, you can't go up against that. Mm -hmm. You can't, like, it, it, there's too many things that have happened. There's too many testimonies I can share. There's so many things God has brought me out of, even since I've been, you know, been an Adventist that, that you can't, you know, take away, mm. or you can't change. Yeah, and I think the be one of the beautiful things about Cole Portering also is that you are equipping people to do that, exactly what you were, were just saying, mm. to study for themselves and find out for themselves mm. who God really is. Yes. So we thank you so much, Mike, mm. for coming on. It was a, a very encouraging story. And we thank you for watching. Um, we hope that you were encouraged and strengthened by this and that you would also um, let your light shine and therefore glorify God um, by what he can do in your life. Thanks for watching.